The kids are very knowledgeable about the world as a whole because of what they learn from social media. We've given our kids that technology. We're seeing them communicate and challenge each other on that technology that might not always be for the good. They have this immediate ability to say what they want, to be mad, to be angry, to be sad, to, and, and to know what everybody else is doing, all in real time. So it's a lot. We're seeing kindergartners getting a hold of their parents' phone or uh, playing video games, and they're interacting with people to communicate with other people in their classes. What I've seen is a continued kind of progression to reliance upon their devices. 15 years ago, kids didn't have telephones in the schools. Now we have almost everybody with a phone in their pocket and a phone in their backpack that they can utilize for a number of different things, social media, using them for class projects, and just being connected. They're connected all of the time now. There's no downtime. There's so much technology that is coming out on a daily basis, and it's really hard to keep up with. There's no template in which to uh, address social media and its advantages and disadvantages. What we're really noticing is juveniles have unlimited access to using social media and a lot of times without the knowledge or permission of their uh, parents. Students are getting on uh, line at nighttime, maybe calling in what we used to know as a bomb threat, now they're calling in a school threat or gun violence or something like that. Finding things that they connect to that aren't necessarily positive in nature all the time. It could be bullying, it could be online chat groups, it could be different games that are a lot more violent than they were 15 years ago. Students were challenged on TikTok to uh, commit acts of vandalism. So they said, uh, steal these soap dispensers. And when that message went out, we were noticing that uh, every school, uh, middle schools and high schools were hit. We're trying to be proactive and really get the message out there that these challenges are not okay to do at schools, but it, each week there's a new challenge or a new trend. What's going on in the real world isn't as exciting for them anymore because of what's going on online. A lot of times what's getting put on social media is just the good things and the positive things and they start to compare themselves. It can lead to anxiety, it can lead to depression. We see fights and assaults that are that have their origins from social media conversations. Sometimes the bullying will happen in the classroom and then at nighttime when the student goes home it will continue on the on online platforms. It even gets worse when it's not in person. Impulse control is something that you learn over time and so you know they don't have great judgment and impulse control so when the impulse occurs to put something out there they just do it. When you see like people you know, if they post something and you know they didn't invite you to it, that's a little bit like fear of missing out, I guess. Social media just sort of throws gasoline on this problem. You know, it just makes it so much easier. It gives people so much more access. You know, this isn't something I've ever talked about with anybody actually, but people are sharing images of their own self-harm on Instagram. It's both disturbing to find those things because you're like, holy moly, like the harm that somebody could do to themselves, it's pretty gruesome. And then it's disturbing to discover about yourself that you search for it and you go back to it and it's something that you seek out. This is really triggering. It's a super toxic environment. This is something that's totally available to me. There's no like sensitive warning. I think that like further triggered me and totally sent me into this spiral where I went back to it and it kept me going. Sometimes it's talking about suicide. You don't have this, you don't have that, you're this, you're that, you should kill yourself. I was walking by a classroom one day and there's a girl didn't even have a phone because her phone was taken away and I noticed she was chatting with somebody off of an iPod. I gave it over to the police, our SROs. That individual was a grown man traveling to Anchorage to meet up with this young 14-year-old girl. He was met at the airport. We gotta be in their business.
The school resource officers are really concentrating on preventing things like this uh, through education about what's going on. The longer that we're able to hold them off on it, the better. There's so many things on there that have such an addictive nature to them and you know we want our kids out there in the real world interacting with people doing things that are fun playing sports you know doing art music engaging in really positive ways sometimes it's just you know you're fat you're ugly and kids internalize things off of social media we're having people from other communities bullying kids in our own school and acting like they know them when they don't, but the kids think they know them because they have an online presence. It isn't just a local thing anymore. I can connect with a ton of peers with none of the emotionally draining energy it takes to consistently and actively reach out to them and be like, hey, what's going on in your life? It becomes a problem when that's super passive and you don't realize that, sure, yeah, you think you have those connections, but in reality, you haven't talked to them in over a year, like seeing them again, is that, is that actually a meaningful connection that like brings you joy or like is meaningful or is somebody that you can lean on or something like that? We assume because kids are growing up with this technology that they have all this awareness and knowledge but sometimes they don't know until something really bad happens that oh hey if I just send this naked picture to you know my boyfriend at the time that he may later share this with everybody or put it online. We're seeing uh, students uh, post nude pictures that audience might be for just their boyfriend or their girlfriend, but then that person shares it with one other person. And then from there, it spreads throughout the entire school community. And a picture could be shared hundreds of times. We we're always telling people about their digital, digital fingerprint and to make sure that whatever you post is pretty much gonna be public. It's going to be out there. Kids will come to school staff and say, hey, we're worried about this person because of what they put. And so it's really good that kids are doing a good job a lot of times at reporting those concerns. We would never give our kids a keys to the car and just say, go drive. I think parents really need to get into their children's world and ask them, what do you like about social media? What are you using social media for? And then really set up uh, expectations and boundaries it's good to ask what accounts they have, what handles they have, what usernames they use, because sometimes the same username or handle will be shared across multiple platforms. And that's just one way of parents being able to sometimes track their kids' online activity. There's some kind of notification thing where parents, anytime their child you know, downloads a new app, they get a notification, so then they're aware of what are even just the different apps that their kids are using. Maybe limit it to two or three hours, whatever is going to work, uh, and not just have unlimited use. I would encourage parents to make sure that it's in a public spot, like the kitchen table or the living room, rather than having the smartphone up in the children's, the child's room. And really at nighttime to make sure that our kids are getting good rest, I would encourage parents to make sure that that smartphone or that tablet is not in the bedroom. What time do you go to bed? I go to bed at 10. What time do you go to sleep? Between 2 and 2.30. You probably have your phone with you, don't you? Yeah, you're probably on social media, aren't you? Yes. I said, how are you going to produce anything at school, perform at school, if you're getting only four or five hours of sleep? So I tell parents, put that, those smartphones away and make it a family event. Everybody. What I recommend to parents, get in their business. They're your kids. Just ask me what you think I'm doing and if you think that's appropriate. Having those conversations with our kids like we do about everything else, just really being so explicit, talking about the good and bad, you know, is this helping or hurting you? If it's hurting, how are we gonna address that? If you don't know how to use the technology, Take it and go find somebody that does and have them look through stuff. Because you pay the bills. You're the boss.
when someone goes through your phone completely, it just feels like, even if there's nothing incriminating on there, it's just a huge invasion of privacy for the kids. It makes even talking to your parents a lot more uncomfortable. Is what they're doing online, is that in line with what their values are? We know as a society that adults are also struggling to not be on their phone all the time. And so when we're telling kids, oh, don't be on your phone all the time, but we're doing that ourselves, you know, it's hard for them to really believe and see the value in that. Put your phone away. Go see what they're doing with their homework. Participate with them. I've taken active efforts into learning more about what my children are doing online. Do they like it? No, but I think it's the responsible thing to do. There's no downside to knowing what your children are doing online. Parents, do you know where your children are online? Get in their business. Think before you post. Would you say that same thing that you're posting directly to someone's face? Once you put something out there, you can't take it back. Let's talk about it.